Howdy, it's Kyle talking about upstate New York, or more specifically, the portions of the state that are not part of the New York City metropolitan area. In this video, I'll be discussing various aspects of the geography of this part of the state. I'll be talking about the cities and the urban landscape. I'll be going over the physical geography to include the topography, water features, and climate. I'll also be going over several economic factors to include companies that are headquartered that part of the state, industries that drive the economy, tax rates, and agriculture, and I'll also be going over some things about the culture, including the food. So if you're interested in learning more about the upstate of the Empire State, this is the video for you. The overall state of New York has a population just under 19.5 million, which ranks fourth in the U.S. Of that population, approximately 13 million live in downstate New York, or the New York City metropolitan area, and just under 6.5 million live in upstate New York. And if upstate were its own state, it would be ranked 18th in the country in terms of population, just ahead of Missouri, just behind Indiana. The overall state of New York is losing population, but it is not the New York City metropolitan area that is losing that population. It is the upstate that is seeing a decline in population. There are 62 counties in the overall state. 51 of those would be considered upstate. Of those 51, only five are gaining in population, three of which are the Albany metropolitan area. The capital is Albany with a population of about 100,000 people and the metropolitan area has about 900,000 people which ranks it 65th in terms of metros in the U.S. And like I just mentioned, this portion of the upstate is actually growing in population but very slowly. The Albany metropolitan area is kind of a tri-cities type place with the cities being Albany, Schenectady, and Troy. I got a lot of comments on my video about the worst capitals in the U.S. and a lot of folks were like, hey, what about Albany? But Albany really isn't that bad. The state capitol building there is really nice. It's one of my favorite ones in the country. It just looks so much different than all the other ones. And the Albany skyline is pretty strange too with those four high rises spaced out equidistantly. I'm not sure exactly what they were going for in terms of the look, but it is unique. Probably the most interesting neighborhood in town is called the Center Square, and that's centered along a street called Lark Street. And this is your kind of cool area with your local shops and boutiques, restaurants and bars, and a pretty good place to hang out. Also really nice for the area is something called the Hudson Mohawk Trail, which is a lot of riverside hiking and biking trails, and it goes on for about 41 miles. There are some pretty rough stretches in the city, and there is above average crime, but the overall cost of living is fairly low. The other two towns in the metro area, Schenectady and Troy, are both a little bit nicer than Albany, although they're not fantastic, but the crime is lower and the cost of living is lower as well. So overall, I wouldn't say Albany is one of the nicest state capitals in the country, but I also don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say. The largest city in the upstate is Buffalo, with a population of about 250,000, which ranks at 86th in the U.S., it's located within Erie County, which is the most populous county in the state outside of the New York City metro area. Included within the Buffalo metro area is Niagara Falls, and the overall combined metro has about 1.3 million people, ranking at 51st in the U.S. So it's just been recently pushed out of the top 50, with Richmond, Virginia passing it. However, Buffalo does feel a little bit bigger than those numbers state, largely because many of the, I guess you could call them suburbs, are actually on the Canadian side of the border. I would argue that the Buffalo-Niagara Falls area has the closest ties to the Canadian side of the border than any other metro area along the border, including Detroit. There are approximately 500,000 people in that southeastern corner of Ontario, Canada, but those numbers aren't added to the overall Buffalo metropolitan area being that they are in Canada. And Toronto is less than two hours from Buffalo and only about an hour and a half to Niagara Falls. Buffalo's a little rough around the edges, but it is pretty cheap to live there. The median house value is under $100,000. However, it does have a 30% poverty rate and a pretty high crime rate to go along with that. But with that being said, I like Buffalo. I've been there twice, and the most recent time I've been there, I saw some pretty good improvements from the time before. The downtown has improved quite a bit. There's an area called Canal Side, which is the end of the Erie Canal. And it's the gentrified former industrial area of the city, a lot of boat launches and great spots for paddling there. And just across the Buffalo River is the Outer Harbor, which is more green space with walking and biking trails that go on for several miles. My favorite part of town is called Elmwood Villas, which is kind of your 
hipster funky part of town with some local shops and boutiques and pretty good restaurants and bars. There's another part of town called Allentown, which is much smaller than the Elmwood Village, but there are some pretty cool funky shops and bars there too. And randomly enough, there's a guy with an apartment there that has a bunch of bubbles always coming out of the window. And I was looking some stuff up on this, and he's just known locally as the Bubble Man. Another thing I like about Buffalo is that there are six indie record shops and seven indie bookstores. That's a lot for a city the size of Buffalo. But there are also some really nice outdoor areas inside or just outside of the city. There's the Tift Nature Preserve, the Rheinstein Woods, Iroquois National Wildlife Refuge, and Unity Island. There's just a lot of cool spots for outdoor activities right near the city. And perhaps Buffalo has the most imposing city hall in the entire country. Why the city hall is that big, I have no idea. I think overall Buffalo usually gets kind of a bad rap, but both times I've been there, I liked it. About a half an hour north of Buffalo is the town of Niagara Falls, and the New York side of the falls is not the part with all the cheesy kind of tourist trap stuff that is kind of like Wisconsin Dells or Gatlinburg. That's the Canadian side of it. And although the New York side is still pretty touristy, it's nowhere near as cheesy as the Canadian side. The second largest city in the upstate is Rochester, with a population of about 200,000 people and declining. The overall metropolitan area has just over a million people, which makes it 58th in the U.S. Now, a pretty good chunk of Rochester is pretty rough. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It has a 32% poverty rate, a very high crime rate, and the median house value is $82,000. The downtown is pretty blah, and to be honest, it's pretty disappointing for a city of its size to have a downtown like that. So whenever I visit a city... I always go to the heart of the downtown first, and then the second part of town I go to is always that kind of hip and trendy part of town with the cool shops and restaurants. And for Rochester, that's Park Avenue, and it's an okay area. There's nothing specifically wrong with it, but it is pretty underwhelming to be that part of town in the largest city of a metro area of over a million people. But one of the things I remember the most about Rochester was the first time I was there, there was this really strange kind of small freeway that went around the downtown, kind of like a circle, and they call it the inner loop. But apparently I wasn't the only one that thought it was kind of pointless because the last time I was there, half of it had been demolished, and now it's a park. But just like Buffalo, there's a lot of nice outdoor areas just outside of the city. You have an area called the Menden Ponds, which is about 2,500 acres and includes some really nice glacial landforms. There's also a nice nature center there with several miles of trails going through some wetlands area. And I'm going to probably butcher this, but Irondequoy Bay and Creek, which is great for paddling. So I try to be as positive as much as I can about places, but at the same time, Rochester is pretty rough. However, there is one really awesome thing about Rochester that I'll mention later on in the video. The next largest city in the upstate is Syracuse, with a population of about 140,000, and the metro area has about 630,000 people and declining. But just like Buffalo and Rochester, it can be pretty rough around the edges. The per capita income is only $20,000, the median house value is $90,000, and there's pretty high crime in the city as well. But because Syracuse is a college town, it does have a little different feel, and overall I would say it's a lot nicer than Rochester. The main part of town for the fun stuff is called Columbus Circle. This is your main entertainment district, some really nice historic architecture, and some great local boutiques. Armory Square is another pretty cool part of town. This is your gentrified former industrial area, and it's also kind of an entertainment district as well. And University Hill, as you might imagine, is a little more college student-oriented with some local shops and stuff, but it tends to be younger and hipper. So just like most of the rest of the upstate, because you're so close to the Great Lakes and there's so much water around, you do have some pretty nice outdoor adventure kind of stuff and some good spots for paddling, hiking, and biking. And I'm going to briefly mention a few of the other bigger towns in the upstate, although unfortunately the economic situation in most of those is kind of the same as Rochester and Syracuse. Utica is the next largest metro area in the upstate. The city itself has about 60,000 people and Oneida County, in which it lies, has about 220000 And with a poverty rate of 30% and a median house value of 92000 it is struggling a little economically. Binghamton is another city that is kind of struggling with a high poverty rate and an $88,000 median house value. But it is more of a college town, so it has a different kind of a feel to it, and it is, randomly enough, the carousel capital of the world, with a large collection of those old-timey carousels. 
Elmira is probably the saddest city in the entire upstate. It has a population of about 25,000 and it's continuing to decline. The per capita income is $16,000 and the median house value is $77,000. has a one-third poverty rate and a fairly high crime rate as well. And interestingly enough, Elmira was the very last city in the U.S. to officially come out of the recession of 2007 to 2009. Ithaca is quite different than the rest of the upstate in that it's got a population of about 35,000. It's not declining but it's also not seeing the same economic downturn as the rest of the upstate. And it's also the most expensive city in the entire upstate, and that's largely because it is home to the Ivy League school, Cornell University. So it has kind of a younger, hipper, and dare I say snobbier type vibe to it because it is an Ivy League town. But at the same time, it does have a really cool downtown, a pedestrian walkway kind of stuff, and with the rest of the upstate being so economically depressed, it is nice to see something that isn't so far behind, even though it is, again, kind of snobby. There are many other small towns throughout the upstate region, but like I was saying at the beginning, only five of the 51 upstate counties are gaining population, so the population situation is pretty much the same throughout the entire upstate, with very few exceptions. So now I want to get into some of the physical geography of upstate New York. And for me, the first thing I think about when I think about the physical geography of the upstate is water, Niagara Falls, the Great Lakes, the Finger Lakes, and all that snow they get during the winter. But because New York State tends to be dominated by New York City, people often overlook just how pretty the upstate is and that some of the nicest scenery you're going to get in the eastern U.S. New York has a coastline with Great Lakes Erie and Ontario, a relatively small portion of the eastern end of Lake Erie and most of the southern end of Lake Ontario border New York. Buffalo sits at the eastern end of Lake Erie and Rochester is pretty much on the coast with Lake Ontario. As far as the Great Lakes go, these are the two babies of the bunch, but they are both enormous lakes and Erie is the 11th and Ontario is the 13th largest lake in the world. The Niagara River is the river that connects Lake Erie to Lake Ontario and it flows from south to north, but because Lake Erie is 325 feet in elevation higher than Lake Ontario, well, that water has to get down there somehow. And the result is the majestic Niagara Falls, the largest waterfall in the world in terms of volume of water going over it. And yes, there are taller and wider waterfalls in the world, but if you're familiar with geology and hydrology, you know the power of water. So the volume of water going over Niagara is what makes it the king. And if you've been there and stood at the railing, you look over at the water and just hear how loud it is and just see how much power, the force of the water going over that falls, it's, it's kind of frightening in a way. It is truly one of the great natural wonders of the world. It is only slightly hindered by the cheesy nature of the town attached to it, but it really is a wonderful sight that everybody should see. South of Lake Ontario is where you get into the Finger Lakes region. And the Finger Lakes are a series of 11 long, narrow glacial lakes oriented north-south. The region was named before aerial photography, but if you look at satellite images, you can see exactly why it would be called the Finger Lakes. So this is a great part of the state for water recreation. There are some nice little towns along the shoreline. And this is also the part of the state that is home to New York's wine country. The Finger Lakes region isn't well known on a national scale, but it is a really nice spot with some cool glacial formations. In the northern portion of the state is where you have the Adirondack Mountains. And this is where you'll find the highest elevations in New York. The highest elevation in the state is Mount Marcy at 5,344 feet. And there are many other peaks in the Adirondacks that are over 4,000 feet. This is another great area to see some really cool glacial formations. There are a bunch of really nice lakes in the region. The most well-known ones are probably Lake Placid and Tupper Lake. And these each have a really cute little town attached to it. And they're both very popular during the summertime. Lake Placid was the host to both the 1932 and 1980 Winter Olympics, and there are many ski resorts in the region. But there are many, many other lakes in the area that are less visited than either Placid or Tupper. The whole area is part of Adirondack Park, which is the largest state park in the U.S. and takes up most of northern New York. And if you're a canoeist, you may be familiar with an Adirondack-style canoe, which is a very small canoe, about 10 to 12 feet, it's usually solo paddled and it's designed for flat water. So there's certainly no shortage of fresh water in upstate New York. 
but not all of the fresh water in the upstate is in the form of lakes. A lot of it comes down in the form of snow. As an overall region, upstate New York is the snowiest part of the contiguous U.S. Syracuse is the snowiest city in the U.S. It averages about 10 feet of snow per year. And both Rochester and Buffalo average more than 90 inches of snow per year. And the reason why you get so much snow up there is the Great Lakes and the lake effect snow. And even though Lakes Erie and Ontario are the smallest of the Great Lakes, they are both east-west oriented, which adds to the lake effect. In the mid-latitudes, we are in a westerly wind belt, so storm systems travel from west to east. So what happens is these large continental polar air masses are coming from the west. They're going across Lakes Erie and Ontario, and they're going really fast. There's no friction, and even though the lake surfaces are very cold, it's warmer than the land. And when these storm systems do reach the land, the land is colder. Colder air can hold less moisture. It just has to rise, cool, and condense, and it dumps all that snow. And so if you're Buffalo or Rochester or Syracuse, you're sitting there just downwind of these Great Lakes, getting the worst of all that lake effect. Or if you like to build snowmen, the best of the lake effect. However, because upstate New York is pretty close to the Atlantic Ocean, you do have a more moderating effect of the ocean temperatures. Now, of course, it still gets extremely cold in upstate New York, but not as cold as the upper Midwest, like Minnesota or North Dakota. However, Minnesota and North Dakota don't get anywhere near as much snow as upstate New York. Now I want to get into some of the economic indicators of the upstate, and like I was alluding to earlier when talking about the cities, the economic situation upstate is not that good. In fact, it's one of the most economically depressed parts of the entire country. The upstate used to be home to major corporations Kodak, Xerox, Carrier Air Conditionings, and General Electric, but those have all left the state, and of the 100 largest companies in New York State, only 11 are in the upstate. Some of the largest companies still headquartered in the upstate include Corning, which does high-tech glass and ceramics, and they're the ones that make Gorilla Glass for your cell phones. MNT Bank, which is one of the largest banks in the northeastern U.S. Aztec Insulated Coatings and Industrial Roofings. Paychex Human Resources and Benefits Management. Delaware North Casino and Horse Race Track Management. And Wegmans Grocery Stores, which I think is the best grocery store chain in the country. But that's really about it for major companies headquartered in the upstate. The largest military installation in the state is Fort Drum, located in the northern portion of the state near the Adirondacks. It's home to the 10th Mountain Division, which is a light infantry unit specializing in snow and alpine conditions. So if you're going to be training soldiers to deal with the extreme cold and heavy snow, well, the upstate's a great place to be doing it. Now I want to discuss the tax rates of New York, and New York is well known for being a high-tax state. It has the 13th highest average state income tax rate in the country, with most folks paying between 6 and 7%. It has the 10th highest sales tax rate in the country at 8.5%, and it has the 11th highest property tax in the country at 1.5%. However, the property taxes aren't going to be crazy high upstate because the house values aren't very high, but still, your overall tax burden is well above average. Next, I want to discuss the agricultural output of the state, and it might come as a surprise, but New York is one of the most important states in the country for ag. It ranks fourth in the country in milk production, and it also ranks fourth in overall dairy in the U.S. It's second in the country in terms of apple production, with only Washington growing more. It's second in the country in maple syrup output, with only Vermont having more. It ranks third in cabbage production. And perhaps most surprisingly, it ranks third in wine production. And a large percentage of the overall agricultural output for the state is centered around the Finger Lakes region. So the manufacturing job sector in the upstate is pretty bad, but the agriculture is pretty good. So the economic situation upstate is not all that great. So I wanted to end the video with something more positive, something more fun. And that's the regional foods. And there have been some wonderful signature foods originate from the upstate. The most well-known food to originate out of the upstate are buffalo wings. And as you might have guessed, they originated in buffalo. It started out as a way to make the most out of what is the least meaty part of the chicken. So fry them up, dip them in some sauces, and then eat about 50 of them. Another great upstate concoction is the beef on weck. And this is a rare roast beef sandwich on a Kimowet Kaiser roll, and it's topped with grated horseradish. I've never had one, but it sounds pretty good. 
There's a large Italian community in the upstate, especially around Utica, and there's a unique take on pizza up there. It's simply called tomato pie, and it's a pizza with a thick, chewy crust, and the tomato sauce is on top of the cheese, which is baked underneath. Something else you can find up there are called white hots, and this is uncured and unsmoked hot dogs, and when they're uncured and unsmoked, they have their natural white color. And when you're in the Buffalo and Rochester area, a regular hot dog is a red hot. A signature dessert for the upstate is grape pie, which is a fruit pie made with Concord grapes, which are the types of grapes you use to make grape jelly. And I wanted to save the best for last. I promised to say something positive about Rochester, and here it is, the garbage plate. And what this is, is a plate of macaroni, fried potatoes, or french fries, topped with hamburger, cheeseburger, or sausage, along with onions and hot sauce. It's a hot mess, but it is a wonderful hot mess. So that's my overview of upstate New York, and when you share a state with the largest and most important city in the U.S., one of the most dynamic cities in the world, it's really easy to forget that other part of the state exists, but for me, being from the Central Valley of California, I know how you feel. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve, and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in hearing more about U.S. geography. I'm comparing and contrasting cities and states in all kinds of various categories, ranking things, talking about cross-country road tripping, just things about geography from a more nerdy perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.